today there is a lot of news. First of all, the Ukrainian special forces conducted a successful operation, where they engaged and neutralized the large Russian landing ship Caesar Kunikov south of Crimea. This vessel, part of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, represented one of the newest and best additions to the Russian naval capabilities. Russian sources reported that Ukrainians utilized seven unmanned surface vessels to target the ship at night, more precisely the fifth generation of Magura drones. Russian analysts note adaptations of the Ukrainian so-called Wolfpack tactics, which are especially successful against stationary targets at sea. This tactic implies a coordinated attack where each drone plays a crucial role in the success of the operation, be that a role of reconnaissance, decoy or striker. Based on the combat footage released by the Ukrainian Main Intelligence Directorate, four drones inflicted critical damage to the port side of Caesar Kunikov, leading to its sinking. Preliminary reports indicate a significant loss of life among the Russian vessel's crew. Search and rescue operations conducted by Russian forces were reportedly too late and unsuccessful. The analysts noted that Russian commanders made a fatal mistake by stopping in the middle of the sea. Based on the footage, the drones were approaching the ship relatively slowly, which means that they were much quieter and harder to detect. Getting so close while being undetected would be impossible if the ship was moving, because the drones would have needed to move faster to catch up. However, the marine drone strike actually happened only after the aerial drone strike. Russian sources reported that before sinking the ship, Ukrainians launched several waves of aerial drones. Russian analysts note that the area of operation of Ukrainian aerial drones increased significantly because now Ukrainians are attacking Crimea not only from the west, but also from the north and east. This implies that the January strike campaign degraded the Russian air defense capabilities considerably. Russian sources even reported that Russians had to engage their fighter jets to intercept two out of three waves of drone attacks. The fact that Russians were engaging additional resources for aerial drone interception indicates that they were once again overly focused on the problems in the sky, failing to prepare for the main attack on their ship from the sea. At the same time, Russian sources confirmed the death of the commander of the Russian 77th Marine Brigade, who died in the hospital in Crimea. Some sources indicate that he was wounded during the previous strike on the Russian headquarters in Crimea, while others say that he was wounded in the Kherson region. Recently, Russian forces also conducted a series of strikes. Their first target became a thermal power station in Dnipro, resulting in the suspension of electricity production. The attack, executed under the cover of night, inflicted substantial damage on critical and large-scale equipment without causing injuries. The second target became the village Selidov, which is located around 40 kilometers away from Avdiivka. Russian sources reported that Russian forces hit a large deployment point using Iskander missiles with cluster munitions and killed up to 600 troops. Some sources claim that Russians hit the newly arrived detachments from the 3rd Assault Brigade that were supposed to reinforce Avdiivka. Shortly after that, Ukrainian fighters from the 3rd Assault Brigade released combat footage, confirming that they were already in Avdiivka, not Salidove. Then Russian sources started claiming that they destroyed wounded troops that withdrew from Avdiivka. Later, local residents published photos of their destroyed houses, indicating that Russians did not hit the shooting range with Ukrainian soldiers. The third target became a temporary Ukrainian equipment park in Tsukurino. The footage confirms that Russians managed to damage and destroy multiple vehicles with cluster munitions. By the way, this settlement is located just two kilometers away from Selidov, and both strikes happened simultaneously. Judging by the fact that the footage from this strike was promptly released, while the footage from Selidov was withheld again, it indicates that Russians did not hit a huge base with Ukrainians. Most prominent Russian sources admitted that due to the absence of any evidence, the location or information about the killed reinforcements to Avdivka cannot be confirmed. Ukrainian commander of forces in Avdivka stated that Russians launched an information operation as a distraction from the heavy losses that Russians are incurring in Avdivka, which recently reached approximately 645 Russian soldiers per day. When it comes to Avdivka itself, the situation is extremely difficult. 
Ukrainian fighters reported that Russian forces conducted up to 60 glide bomb strikes on Ukrainian positions just over the past day, just inside the town. Ukrainian fighters noted that due to the dynamic nature of fighting, some of these bombs fall on Russian soldiers, but the Russian commanders do not care. In combination with air strikes, Russian forces are actively pouring in their reserves to overwhelm Ukrainian forces and maintain the momentum. This allowed Russians to cross the rails and establish physical control over the main supply road. However, this morning a portion of Ukrainian reserves was deployed to this region and started conducting counterattacks. According to the latest available combat footage, Ukrainian fighters from the 3rd Assault Brigade used Bradleys to attack Russian forces and push them away from the road by more than 150 meters. Ukrainian commander of the famous 110th Brigade that has been fighting in Avdiivka non-stop for two years stated that they felt a tangible relief once the help from the 3rd Brigade arrived. Even though Russian sources are already celebrating the encirclement of the town, a Ukrainian fighter from the 24th Battalion said not to take everything at face value, as the situation is very dynamic with a lot of back and forth. He also added that Ukrainian low-level commanders are neither stupid nor spineless and would not allow the high command to just leave them to be encircled. The fact that Ukrainian soldiers actively defend the decision of higher command even more than during the battle for Bakhmut indicates that there is a plan that they do not hurry to reveal. It seems like Ukrainians are waiting until Russians exhaust their reserves to make a move. And with an average of 645 killed Russian troops per day just in Avdiivka, they may not need to wait for long. Avdiivka is no doubt the hottest part of the front line. However, Russian forces are conducting not one, but five simultaneous offensive operations at the moment, and in my exclusive strategic updates, I have reviewed all of them. In the strategic update dated the 4th of February, I made a breakdown of Russian offensive capabilities, goals, main directions, and tactics, while in the strategic update dated the 11th of February, I made a breakdown of Ukrainian defensive capabilities, where they are building their defense lines and how they force Russians into death zones. I have enabled a 7-day free trial on my Patreon page for everyone who wants to check it out for free. The link to my Patreon page is in the description. If you like the exclusive content that I offer, consider supporting me with your subscription.